In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the engine mount on the passenger side of this Toyota Highlander. Remove the five 21 millimeter lug nuts. Remove the wheel. We're going to remove the engine splash shield. There's 14 10 millimeter bolts and three clips. Remove the clips. Go around and remove our 10 millimeter bolts. Remove the three 17 millimeter nuts. Using a 19 millimeter wrench or socket. Remove the nut on top of the engine mount. Using a jack and a large piece of wood, we're going to put slight amount of pressure right under the edge of the oil pan. Using a 14 millimeter on a swivel or a 14 millimeter swivel socket, we are going to remove the three 14 millimeter bolts on the engine mount bracket. There is enough room behind this engine mount to get after that bolt with a ratchet from this side. Now we'll separate the bracket from the mount. I'm gonna be using a pitman arm puller to remove the bracket from the mount. If you don't have one of these, there's multiple other ways. You could just take this top nut off and while everything is still bolted to the car, you could just pry the engine up and break the tension. There's just a lot of corrosion in here that prevents it. You could also just take a hammer or a pry bar and pry under it. It really won't take much. As you can see, I did that with my fingers and it's off. Take the boot from the old engine mount and install it on the new one. And then your new engine mount's ready to go in. Install the motor mount back into the car. Gonna hand thread on my three nuts. I put anti seize on all three of these bottom studs. Install the engine mount bracket. and swivel that into place. I'm gonna hand thread this nut on for the engine mount, and then we'll start all of the bracket bolts by hand. If you have any bolts that are super corroded, it's a good idea to bring them to a wire wheel and clean them up before you install them. I'm gonna do that now. Once you have all your bolts nice and clean, I like to put a little bit of anti-seize around the shank just to avoid corrosion growing back on them. Once you have them clean and anti-seized, go ahead and install them. You may need to 
move your jack up or down to move the engine into a place that these can thread in easy. You want to make sure these are not cross-threading in. You can wiggle the mount sometimes to get the right angle on the bolt. Once you know they're not cross-threading, go ahead and use your electric tools if you have them to put them in. Torque the engine mount bracket bolts to 40 foot-pounds. If you can't get a torque wrench in here, do the best you can. Once you have the bracket torqued down and all of these nuts hand tight, go ahead and take the jack out from under the oil pan and then we'll go ahead and torque all the rest of our bolts. Tighten down the three nuts on the bottom of the engine mount. And we will torque these to 64 foot-pounds. Tighten down the top mount nut. And we'll torque that to 70 foot pounds. If you can't get a torque wrench in here, do the best you can. Install the plastic cap back into the subframe. If you have the second one, install it now. Install the engine splash shield. Screw in your bolts. The screw thread ones go up front, and the fine bolt thread ones go in middle. It's a good idea to put anti-seize on these so they're easy to come out every time. The cover for the inner fender liner is supposed to be under the front shield. It's also supposed to tuck into this bumper. Install the two clips and there's one in the middle. Then go around and tighten up all your bolts. Install the wheel. Start your five lug nuts, finger tight. Tighten them down in a star pattern to make sure it seats properly. I'm going to torque this wheel to 80 foot-pounds in a star pattern. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.